programs for the Boeing program. We used the Excel, you know, spreadsheets uh, with the. I will not use, you know, testing. So we do a lot of automated tests. So. Uh, Automated testing could be just a collection of manual test cases. Uh, we had a team of uh, engineers who have built about uh, you know thousand uh, odd uh, manual tests, and uh, we can run it in a batch mode. You know that is uh, test automation. At least the execution is automatically done. Even though the development was manual and well defined before so that you know that automatically it can tell you whether your test case has uh, passed or failed. So normally what we do is we run our test cases on a simulator and show that our test cases are very good and then we run it on our board. And a lot of tools are uh, developed proprietary to a company. So most of the companies they develop their own tools and uh, they used it uh, in their automation. And if you are developing your own tools then you will have to qualify it for a certificate. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, generating automated uh, test cases and uh, uh, this uh, does save a lot of uh, effort instead of doing everything manually but uh, uh, if it is generated automatically then there should be somebody to review that and say that okay, your test case is good and a uh, lot of effort and money is spent on uh, qualifying these tools because uh, if you are using a tool you cannot uh, blindly use it. So a lot of uh, money and effort is uh, spent in qualifying these automated uh, test case generators. So we have done that in Move also for our own uh, programs. One of the methods uh, that you can use is to generate random test cases. I mean this is the simplest way of doing things. Just generate some random waveform, inject it into your uh, requirements, inject the same inputs into your code and uh, look at the coverage metrics and uh, if both are matching then you have done a fantastic test. So random test cases are the easiest way of uh, optimizing test cases. We have done it for the Indian SARS program. I was working with Honeywell then and the whole thing was automated and uh, we could uh, generate a set of test cases and optimize set of test cases which would cover the complete uh, SARS mode transition at a system level. So it is possible to generate uh, test cases uh, just by giving random signed waveforms. Uh, if you are working on control systems, then uh, just generating a random noise doesn't help. Okay? I cannot have a random noise uh, injected into a filter. It will say that it is noise and remove it. So what we normally do is we generate a sine wave with a random frequency, a random amplitude and a random bias term and these waveforms are injected into the uh, system. So this works very well for us and we have found enough issues and we still find issues just by following this uh, method. Another thing that we did was okay, how many times and what should be my frequency, what should be my amplitude. So what we did for the LCA program was we analyzed the LCA flight profile, the way the pilot flies it. We looked at uh, uh, 10 or 15 of the test sorties and uh, we decided that okay, most of the time it's a very low frequency zone and uh, higher frequencies uh, about 10% uh, of the time you have a higher frequency zone. So 1 to 3 hertz is about 90%. So we said okay we will just generate uh, test cases uh, with a lower frequency most of the time and uh, we will have uh, additional test cases with higher frequencies. So things like that. So you have a uh, if you have a lot of data, you can think of you know a simple techniques to come up with uh, some realistic uh, numbers. Uh, let me talk about uh, coverage metrics. So uh, when I say that I have generated a random test, it's just not I generate waveforms and inject it. I have to look at uh, coverage. So one thing is I have to look at code coverage. So there are ready-made tools available which instrument the code and give you a coverage uh, metric for that. But uh, you require to do your uh, model coverage also, the requirements coverage also. So what we have done is we have come up with our own metrics uh, for our control system. So you may have to come up with certain metrics which uh, 
uh, which is very specific to your application and say that when do I say whether I have covered my uh, system requirement or not. So a little bit of uh, you know skillful programming on your part can come up with very simple tools, very tailor made for your specific uh, requirement, and it is worthwhile spending some time at the beginning of the project to have these tool sets uh, ready, and it will go a very long way. So this is what uh, we have seen, and uh, one week of effort, and uh, we have generated tools which has been used throughout. So uh, the test cases should. Uh, uh, cover the system requirement. This, I keep uh, repeating this that uh, you should not only look at code coverage but at system coverage also. The system requirement should be completely covered. Code and model coverage are not, they are good metrics but they don't in, uh, indicate a functional coverage. So always look for some functional coverage and come up with your metrics which says that there is a functional coverage. I don't know how many of you use uh, orthogonal arrays for testing. Uh, this is a very nice concept of uh, reducing test cases. So using orthogonal arrays, we have uh, generated test cases for the LCA program, for the SARS program earlier. Uh, we have used it uh, for the Boeing programs also, where I can generate uh, very optimized test cases by running these uh, orthogonal arrays. So there is a program, a free batch software called OrbPatch, so you could use that, that is available. Uh, Google on all paths. I think I have given the web address also. In case it is not there, you can Google for all paths and uh, you will get this too. Uh, there is the ACTS software, ACTS software from NIST USA. And uh, this is again a software which can uh, help you make these orthogonal arrays or covering arrays. Excellent uh, tool which can help you do a test case design. I think it is worthwhile going there, downloading this tool and using it in your test cases and procedures. So what are basically these orthogonal arrays? If you look at this uh, array behind, what it uh, is showing you is uh, there are uh, seven uh, columns there and uh, eight uh, runs. And if you take any two columns, say one and two if you take, all combinations of you know one and two have been tested, one, 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 two, two, one, two, two. So take any two columns all combinations of 1 and 2 have been tested. So in an orthogonal uh, terminology, we will say that this is a uh, two-level uh, orthogonal array because the levels are 1 and 2 and uh, it has uh, seven inputs. So you can look at seven factors and it has uh, eight experiments. So it is basically known as an L8 array. Now, why do I get these uh, orthogonal arrays? They are again available. Just Google for orthogonal arrays and you will get a list of hundreds of orthogonal arrays which can be used by you. The other uh, technique that we have used is on error uh, sealing. So this has helped us uh, during our LCA control law where we injected deliberate alerts into a system and uh, we called it a delta model. And uh, we had a model, we had a delta model. Delta model had a single error injected into it and uh, we ran test cases to find that error. We done something very similar for our Boeing test cases also where we have a Simulink model and in the model we inject one error, we generate a test case. If the test case can find this error, we say that okay this test case is very good because it can find my seeded error. So similarly we do this but it's a laborious process. You have to do it for all the blocks in your model but it is one way of uh, generating test cases, an excellent uh, way of generating test cases where you know for sure that your test case is good to bring out your error. Uh, I'll cover a bit about uh, what uh, 